Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, sounds completely made up, and yet he continues to be the Republican Speaker of the House. I've he seen, does yeah, exist. I've seen You've him seen in person now. He's real. But the real takeaway from what's happening on Capitol Hill right now is that Democrats made a decision yesterday to ally themselves formally with Mike Johnson in his battle against House Republicans. So Marjorie Taylor Greene's motion to vacate, and we can put this first element up on the screen. This is a tweet from uh, Jake Sherman over at Punchbowl that House Democratic leadership has said they will vote to table that Marjorie Taylor Greene motion to vacate if she forces a vote on it, which is called privileging the motion. So she filed the motion weeks ago. Thomas Massey signed on to it after the uh, Ukraine you know, party vote for an aid vote that we talked about last week. And Tom, speaking of Thomas Massey, we can put the next element up on the screen. He tweeted yesterday uh, at Representative Jeffries and Speaker Johnson, not sure who's in charge, so asking both of you, are you still working together to eliminate the motion to vacate so you can share power forever? This was in response to a Mike Johnson tweet on April 18th, talking about how uh, many people, to borrow a phrase from, from Trump, many people uh, have been uh, encouraging him to endorse a new rule to raise the threshold on the motion to vacate. Super quick primer on the motion to vacate. It sounds like a technical parliamentary procedure term. What it actually means is that it existed in Congress until Nancy Pelosi took it away after watching what happened to John Boehner. We somehow managed now to talk about John Boehner twice in this show in 2024. But John Boehner was... Uh, he, he had a motion to vacate filed against him by Mark Meadows and Jim Jordan back in the day. They never ended up privileging it. They forced Boehner to resign. Nancy Pelosi saw that and changed the rule that had existed for all of Congress's history, basically, and said, this is not happening to me. I'm not going to have challenges to my power just because one of my members wants to uh, file and privilege this motion to vacate. So what Hakeem Jeffries Nancy Pelosi's successor is doing right now is saying we're saving Mike Johnson's ass uh, because if Marjorie Taylor Greene forces this motion to, to vacate and privileges it and gets a vote and I'm out of here or that Johnson is out of here, um, we'd rather have Mike Johnson in power. Uh, and no. that's saving Republicans from a cycle of chaos in the middle of an election year because, Ryan, I'm curious for your perspective on this, Democrats realize that they can get a lot of their priorities over the hurdle of Republican House leadership, Republican majority in the House, because they have the Senate and the presidency. They feel like they can get uh, probably a lot of earmarking, pork st type stuff out of uh, funding bills. FAA is coming up, farm bills coming up in the future by aligning themselves with Mike Johnson now. And I think you, you have to presume that there was some type of an arrangement mm -hmm. when it came to passage of no, they avoided a government shutdown. They funded the wars in uh, Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan. And Democrats provided a lot of muscle for that. But, you know, Speaker Johnson had to go along and put it on the floor. And so you can imagine that this, uh, this commitment from Hakeem Jeffries is not coming out of nowhere, um, that it comes out of those, those talks and that, that collaboration, that cooperation uh, from before. Uh, I, you know... It's. I think that Democrats think, okay, yeah, chaos is fun. Like it's nice to, when you know Republicans are shooting at each other, and if you could have them, you know, voting for Speaker again for a week or two, it makes them, it makes them look like losers. But yeah, I think to your point, their priority was getting the getting the wars funded, and is, so they'd rather have that than a than a marginal and a political uh, it, advantage. Um, and you know, they still get a, plenty of infighting. Like there's lots of. Republican finger pointing. Well, and speaking so they can of, have the uh, best of all worlds. Speaking of books written by Ryan Grimm, uh, you can also see the squad behind you. And Stacking one of, them up back there. The thing that I wanted to ask you was actually if this is demoralizing to the squad uh, and to members of sort of Justice Dems when they see this happening. Because I bet to a lot of their voters you see this happening, it it is demoralizing and it's it, infuriating. It, I mean, it might be demoralizing to their uh, to their base, but probably not to them personally because they've uh, been because uh, they, they've, been, they've been lockstep with Jeffries like they voted for Jeffries um, every every step of the way they didn't mount anybody to challenge Jeffries uh, and they they you know they, they did not like that is, is funding for the war in Israel moved through but they all were supportive of the money for the war in Ukraine for the most part so uh, I don't see a whole lot of daylight between them and Jeffries on on these on these questions, you know, it, it deprives, you know, it, it now the question would be, would Republicans bail out 
a Jeffries speakership mm -hmm. in the future? No. You don't think so? No. Let him, let him go down? Because I can just imagine Republican voters after that happened flooding town halls. It would be like Tea Party all over again. And Republicans are just, I think, kind of keyed into getting the, the, the different parliamentary machinations, probably post Tea Party, because this was such a big deal with Boehner. And I just see like actually less of that on the left, that they pay really close attention to the different maneuvers that leadership uses to kind of screw over populists. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the right, that's a pretty mainstream like hobby horse of people in the conservative movement is following uh, what's happening in the sort of like meat grinder on Capitol Hill. So I think people would be pretty furious about that. Um, you know, Mike Johnson just, I don't think, there would be some people who would. You know, there, you could maybe get 15 to 20, so it kind of depends on how big the majority is. Uh, there's, right. there's maybe a way to make the math work, but I don't know. I think that would be unlikely. But what it means is today is May 1st, happy May Day, and you're not going to have any kind of House Speaker drama between now and November um, right. until after the election. Right, which again, if I'm a Democratic voter, I'm watching this and say, saying, what the hell are you doing? Like, let them do this. Like, let them let, fight. Let them fight. Um, it's the middle of an election year. Why are you going out of your way to save Mike Johnson, who just said, for example, we have a, a biblical mandate uh, Johnson, to step in with Israel? Tell me if I'm still correct on this. Johnson was known as a terrible fundraiser. Um, is he still a bad fundraiser? Has he stepped his game up? Because if not, like one of the un, you know unspoken reasons or unspoken publicly reasons that Democrats were so happy to see Kevin McCarthy go is that he was a voracious fundraiser, mm -hmm. t tens to hundreds of millions of dollars for Republican candidates. And taking that chess piece off the board meant that that was tens of millions of dollars that might not get raised and then spent against Democratic candidates. You know, the week after um, he, he was ousted, they had to cancel some gigantic fundraiser in Texas. Yeah. And you would think that material interests alone would get these donors to write these checks to the political party that is benefiting their material interests, mm -hmm. but they also need to be sweet talked. They want that rubber chicken, they want the speeches, uh, they, they want the glad handing, they want, they want the photo, they want their kid to get the internship and, and the chance to like whisper in the ear of the speaker. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And without that, uh, you know, they're going to give less money. Um, yeah. So, if it's still the case that uh, Johnson is a lousy fundraiser, Hakeem Jeffries is probably thinking, let him continue as speaker. Yeah, he's not Kevin McCarthy. Uh, that's basically what I've heard in those circles. Is he, he may have he could step his game up. That's still not going to make him Kevin McCarthy. And you know, there's mixed donor opinions on some of these uniparty priorities, especially in the right now, yeah. Ukraine, et cetera. Yeah, I think the donors don't are a little. Some of these rich Republicans are probably put off by his the true stuff. believer. Well, he, he's also a true believer um, and a dominionist oh, type. Saying. Yes. Who's, you mean religious? Yeah. yeah. Right. Whereas the some of the rich Republicans, yeah, they, they, they go to church and they talk about it, but they're like, right. ooh, this guy, no. he really means this stuff. Well, th Donald Trump himself was a Republican donor, and yeah. he's not going to be like persuaded yeah. by the dispensationalist uh, biblical yeah. mandate philosophy about supporting theoretical arguments about how church the separation of church and state is uh, a myth people are probably icked up by mike johnson yeah in that yeah. respect but who knows how i mean he can be selling himself in a number of different ways behind closed doors but uh you know there's still there's still gonna be plenty of money uh, that lobbyists have to throw around uh, in the defense industry and sector so maybe that'll help him because he got the bill over the line. That said, with uh, sort of a lot of Republican voters, are sort of not voters, donors, mainstream Republican donors, they're not going to be happy about the border uh, mm -hmm. being left out of that bill. So uh, too. All right, but speaking of uh, religious controversies, that's right. Got, uh, the author of the new book, Pagan America. Yeah. So he means it in a different way than you do, Ryan. Right. Ryan sees Pagan America and he thinks... <laughs> We did it. Mission accomplished. Conquered. The banner up. <laughs> yeah. America has fallen. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.